Ah, thank you, standard deviation. All right, guys, welcome to Psych Explain. In this video, we're going to dive into standard deviation. Specifically, what is standard deviation, and also how can we use this measurement to help explain what's happening in a normal distribution curve. And we're going to do that using a memory technique known as the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. Now, if you ever looked up standard deviation on your own, you know it can be confusing. In fact, here's the formula for calculating standard deviation. You can see how tricky that can be. But in this video, we're gonna break it down, we're gonna make sense of it, we're even gonna do a practice problem together before you do one on your own. And we're gonna start this video with a connection between you, standard deviation, and picking the perfect vacation destination spot. So, let's get started. So I want you to imagine that you're planning a vacation and you're choosing between two different cities. We'll call these city A in red and city B in blue. And the only thing you care about is the weather. Right, you want perfect weather, not too hot, not too cold. You just want to sit by the beach every day in the sun. So you do some research. And you find that the average temperature in the time period you want to go is the exact same for both cities. And on this graph, you can see that the average temperature, which is right in the middle because these are symmetrical curves, is 75 degrees, right? This will be our mean. And on the surface, you're thinking, what does it matter which city I go to? It's the same average temperature, it's a win-win but the mean only tells half the story. Let's take a look at the curves. Do you notice anything different between curve A and curve B, even though they have the same mean score? What we notice about city A, and we'll start with that in red, is that most of the data is clustered right in the center, right? Imagine each one of these represents a data point of a temperature on a specific day, and they're all clustered right in the center. So city A is very reliable, right? It's low variability, you know exactly what it's gonna be on those days, maybe varying between, let's say, 68 and 78 degrees. Not much difference. And then we look at city B, which also has an average mean temperature of 75, but what do we notice? There are much more extremes. That yes, you can have a great temperature, in fact, you can even have temperature of 90 to 100 degrees, that would be perfect, right? These are all of our data points of temperatures during the month we wanna go. But there's also a chance to have very low temperature, right? Uh, very cold, it could be 60 degrees on the beach and nobody wants that, right? So what does this have to do with standard deviation? Well, standard deviation tells us how far away or how spread out numbers are, data points are from the mean, either maybe above or below. Let's write that in together, okay? So what is standard deviation? And we'll do an SD. And also here's our little, you know, symbol for standard deviation. It is how far away, right, this is just kind of getting some basic information, how far away, and I also like to use the phrase spread out as we think of data points. So how far away or how spread out data is, data is from the center, from the center or from the mean, okay? And you'll also notice I use the word variability, right? The variability of a data set. And what we found from that, and I'll use a different marker for that, is that you can have a high variability and you could also have a low variability. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at the red one, okay? The red curve, this is city eight, right? This is gonna be considered a low standard deviation. And here's our little symbol for standard deviation because everything is clustered together around the mean. So when you hear low standard deviation, it means all the data is close to the center, okay? Let's write that in. So what does that mean? Low standard deviation, okay, is when data clusters, clusters around the mean, right? And here's our, we'll do another uh, symbol for the mean, okay? And then also, what have, what's the opposite? Well, if the data is very far away, you can have a high standard deviation. Okay, here's our high standard deviation. And a high standard deviation, okay, is when the data, instead of is clustered around, is spread out. Data spread out, right? Or is far away. So there's our intro into standard deviation. What we want to know is how far away scores are from the mean, and it could be low or it could be high. 
And by the way, we can think about a lot of things in our lives that can connect to this chart, right? Imagine going to a college, right? You're choosing between colleges and you want to know, you know how happy people are on that college campus and you find the averages. Well, that only tells half the story, right? Because it might vary a lot, right? Some people might hate the college, some people might love the college, and it might be in between. So there's a lot of connections to everyday life when it comes to standard deviation. All right, so now that we know what standard deviation is, how can we use standard deviation to help explain what's happening in a normal distribution curve? Now let's get some background knowledge. What do I mean by a normal distribution curve? What I mean is that the curve is symmetrical. If you put your hand right down the middle, right? It should be exactly the same on the left side and the right side. So 50% of the data is on the left, 50% of the data is on the right. There is no skew. That is a normal distribution curve. We often call it a bell curve because it, well, it looks like a bell. And the memory technique to use standard deviation to explain this is called, see if you remember from the beginning, it's called the 68, 95, 99.7 rule, also called the empirical rule. Each of these numbers represents a percentage, okay? Let's dive into each one of these. What does this mean? And let's break it down. So how can we break this down? First, what we're saying with 68 is that 68% of the data points lie within one standard deviation of the mean. We'll break that down in a moment. 95%, that's our second number, of the data points lies within two standard deviations of the mean. What's last? 99.7. 99.7% of the data lies within three standard deviations of the mean. So each one of these is a percentage, and we have a one, two, and a three. Let's break this down to make sense of it, okay? What do I mean by 68% of the data lies within one standard deviation of the mean? Well, first, where's the mean? In a normal distribution bell curve, the mean and the median mode are right in the middle. So here's our mean right here, okay? Now, I want you to notice two things. Notice that we have a positive going this way, plus positive one, positive two, positive three, and we have negatives going this way, negative one, negative two, negative three. And why is that? Well, imagine that I gave a test to my students, right? And the average was like a 75. Okay, we'll say the same as the temperature, right? 75 was the average, right? Well, some students are gonna do above the, the mean, right? They're gonna do better than the average. Maybe they got an 80, a 90, or even 100%. So that's why there's a plus there, because scores can always be above the mean. Which tells you, think about why there's negative, students can also score below the mean, right? I have students scoring at a 65%, a 55%, and failing maybe lower than a 50%. So we always have scores that are above the mean, and we always have scores that are below the mean. So where does the one come in? We're gonna go one direction to the right, right above the mean, and we're also, you gotta go in both directions, one direction below the mean, right? So that is one standard deviation. And if we do our lines, right, I'm gonna to try to draw straight here as best as I can, right? Here is our standard deviation. This is one standard deviation. Remember 68? Let's write that in together. So what are we saying? We are saying that 68% of the data lies within this region right here. And we'll shade that in together. Okay, 68% of our data lies within one standard deviation of the mean, right? And what you just have to remember is that you gotta go in both directions, not just above the mean, but also below the mean, all right? All right, let's try the second one. 95% of the data lies within two standard deviations of the mean. So what do we do? Well, we have the mean right in the middle, and how many times we gotta go over? One and two in this direction as well. One this way and one this way. Two and two, and this becomes, as I have my little line right here, our data for two standard deviations. So what does this tell us? It tells us that 95% of the data, right, and actually I'll just do a little line right here to help us out here. There we go. Lies within two standard deviations of the mean, okay? Basically at this point we're saying most of the data falls within two standard deviations of the mean, right? both above and below, okay? So let's color that in, shade that in so you're all with me, okay? Now, as I'm doing this, 
I want you to think about this one right here, right? What would I do for 99.7% lies within three standard deviations of the mean, right? What would that look like? Well, our mean's right in the middle. How many do we ought to go to the right? One, two, three, okay? And there's our little point right here. Do we gotta go this way? Absolutely. One, two, and three. So what this is showing us is that 99, this is basically everybody, percent of the data, falls within three standard deviations of the mean, okay? So this is basically, well, everybody, okay? Three standard deviations of the mean, okay? Color that in as well, okay? And I also want you to think about not just, you know, in test scores, right? As I was showing you before, saying before, you know, if I was giving a test, basically what we're saying if I gave a test to my students, you know, what we're saying is 68% of my students scored within one standard deviation, 95% of my students scored within two standard deviations, and 99.7% of my students scored within three standard deviations of the mean. But it doesn't just have to be intelligent, right? Think about all the things in life that would be on a bell curve. Height, people's weight, blood pressure, intelligence. So this, I always think about the bell curve as like the bell curve of life. Most things in life will fall on this curve, all right? Now, before we do our practice problem, there's one thing else I want us to do. We should be able to break down not just 68%, but what if I just want to know this section right here, right? Not negative one to positive one, but just this one right here. And it's going to help us for our practice problem. Well, what we do, and we'll do this for each one, is we take our number and we divide it by two. So 68 divided by two is 34. So what does that tell us? It tells us, I'll raise right here, is that 34% is between this interval, I'll raise this here, and 34% is on this interval, right? Zero to positive one is 34%, and zero to negative one is 34%, all right? Let's do that again. So we have 95%. Let's write in, actually let's just draw these lines so just so you can see it here. There we go. So we know already, right, this is 34, 34, right, and we know this is 34. But what if I want to know plus 1 to plus 2 and negative 1 to negative 2? How would I find this number? Well, what we do is we take 95% divide, uh, subtract by 68%, and we divide that by 2. So 95 minus 68 divided by 2, that's going to give us these two numbers. And what does that come out to? It comes out to... 13.5. I'm doing the dirty work for you. I've already done this calculation. Okay? So you just got to trust me on this. Okay? 13.5. Okay? So we have 34, 34, 13.5, 13.5. Okay? Now, what about the last one? Well, if we take this again, and we'll do our numbers, right? We'll keep going up. We'll keep going up. We'll go up here. We'll go this way again. We'll go this way again. Let's write this in together. Right? So by the end, we'll have all of our numbers. We have 34. We have 34, we have 13.5, we have 13.5. So then what we do is we take 99.7 minus 95, we divide that by 2, and that's going to give us what we have in these two corners. And what does that come out to? That comes out to, and I'm going to do a little dash here, 2.35. What does it come out to? 2.35. Three, five, right? If you add up all these numbers together, and even ones over here, it's going to add up to 100%, right? We want 100% of our data. So anything past positive 3, you know, this little space right here, this is going to be a 0.15, and this right here past negative 3 is going to be 0.15, okay? So that's how we break down our data. We have 68, 95, 99.7, and you can also break down each individual interval. This is going to add up to what? 100%. 0.15 plus 2.35 plus 13.5 plus 34 plus 34 plus 13.5 plus 2.35 plus, plus 0.15 is going to equal 100%. I promise you, try it at home. Make sure that I'm right. All right, so let's do a practice question. We're going to do this one together, and then this one I'd like you to do on your own. And if you scroll down in the discussion box below the video, you'll see the answer and how I got to that answer, and you can compare. So let's do the first one together. Here's what it says. Approximately what percentage of babies weigh between 7 and 8.5 pounds at birth? 
with a standard deviation of 0.5 pounds and a mean of 7.5 pounds. So let's break this down together. Let's start with the mean. We know the mean is always going to be in the middle, right? It's a normal distribution curve. The mean and the median mode are always in the center. So we have 7.5 pounds is going to be in the middle, okay? And we have a standard deviation of 0.5. So what does that mean? It means every number is going to go up by 0.5. So 7.5, remember going up to 8, right? 7.5 plus 0.5 is 8. And then we have 8.5 plus 0.5 is 9, right? 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, right? Do we have to go this direction? Absolutely. Now we've got to go down. So 7.5 minus 0 0.5. So we have 7 and then 6.5 and then 6, right? So here's our graph right now. And what we want to know is what percentage of babies weigh between 7 and 8.5. So let's circle those together. So we want to know between 7 and 8.5. Now, how can we go about answering that question? We can use our memory technique, the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. So what can we do? Well, one deviation to the right, right? One this way. So this would be one standard deviation. Let me ask you that. What percentage is one standard deviation from the mean? 68, okay? 68%, okay? So we know already, I'll shade this in, that between seven and eight is 68%. Shade, 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 shade. There we go. Okay. But now what I need is to 8.5. Okay. So how do I get this number? Well, as we did before, right? 34 and 34. And then between plus 1 and plus 2 is 13.5 because we did 95 minus 68 divided by 2 told us both sides. So this side, we know between there is going to be 13.5%. So, shade that in here. What do we do? We add them together. 68% plus 13.5% equals, I feel like this is like a finale, da da da, 81.5%. And there's our answer. 81.5% of babies born weigh between 7 and 8.5 pounds. There we go. So that's how we can do our standard deviation and our normal distribution curve. All right, we have a practice question. Approximately what percentage of high school students have a GPA below 2.8 with a standard deviation of 0.2 and a mean GPA of 3.0? Now for this one, I want you to try on your own. I'll put the answer below the video in the discussion box and compare. So do the best you can.